Previously, we learned about what a data analyst does and why that work is so valuable. Now, let's look at where data analysts actually do their work. You'll learn much more about the industries you could work in as a data analyst and how companies in these fields are already using data analytics to do some really cool things. There are so many businesses out there that have a big need for the skills you're learning right now. Across industries like technology, marketing, finance, healthcare, and so many more, real companies are already using data analytics to stay ahead of the curve. And the more they use data in their business, the more they understand just how important data analysts like you are to their success. Let's look at a real life example of a brand you'll probably recognize, Coca-Cola. Data is changing the way Coca-Cola approaches its marketing strategies. Coca-Cola uses data gathered from consumer feedback to create advertising that speaks directly to different audiences with different interests. How does this work? You know those high-tech Coca-Cola vending machines you see at movie theaters sometimes? It's always fun getting to make your own flavors. Well, those machines have built-in artificial intelligence and data analysis tools. This helps Coca-Cola see all the different kinds of flavor combinations people are coming up with, which they can then use as inspiration for new products. How cool is that? Ever wonder how Google gives you the right answer to any question in just seconds? That's powered by data too. We use all kinds of data to determine a website's reliability and accuracy to make sure you get the most useful results for any search you make. But it isn't just big companies like Coca-Cola and Google that use data. Small businesses everywhere are also starting to take advantage of data-driven insights to improve their operations and make better decisions. Small businesses can use data to do all kinds of things. They might use data analytics to better understand their customers' buying habits, create more effective social media messaging, or, in the case of one city zoo and aquarium, predict the number of daily visitors based on local climate data. City Zoo and Aquarium realized that on rainy days, they were seeing huge drop-offs in attendance, but they had no way to accurately predict when those rainy days would hit. This made staffing a real challenge. Some days they found themselves overstaffed, other days they were unprepared for the rush of visitors. To deal with this, data analysts took years of weather records from the zoo and used that data to accurately predict future weather patterns. This made it easy for the zoo to know how much staff they needed when. Because the zoo could predict and manage their staffing needs more accurately, they were able to provide a better experience for visitors and dedicate more resources to creating a better experience for the animals too. We see a similar thing in the healthcare industry. There, data analysts look at clinic attendance data to help hospitals and doctor's offices predict when rush hours will hit so they can be ready for it. Your local city hospital is a great example. Let's say they've been getting complaints about long wait times, sometimes an hour or more, which made it hard for some patients to get the care they needed. So data analysts use data about the hospital's daily foot traffic to help them make more informed decisions about how many doctors they need on staff at any given time. This helped reduce wait times, improve their patients' experience, and make better use of the healthcare worker's time too. Like I said, there are many ways that companies in different industries put data to use, but they can only do that if they have data analysts they can rely on. So you might be wondering how you fit into the equation. Well, you've got plenty of options, but you don't have to decide what industry you want to work in right away. There will be plenty of time to think about that as you make your way through this program. By the time you finish this program, you'll have the core skills that will make you valuable in any industry that makes data-driven decisions, which, as it turns out, is most industries, even zoos. As a data analyst, you'll be tackling business tasks that help companies use data. Coming up, we'll talk more about what a business task actually is and some examples of what they might look like in real data analyst jobs. Let's take a second to think back on the real examples of businesses using data analytics in their operation we've seen before. You might have noticed a common theme across every example. They all have issues to explore, questions to answer, or problems to solve. 
It's easy for these things to get mixed up. So here's a way to keep them straight when we talk about them in data analytics. An issue is a topic or subject to investigate. A question is designed to discover information. And a problem is an obstacle or complication that needs to be worked out. Coca-Cola had a question about new products. Data analysis gave them insights into new flavors customers already like. The city zoo and aquarium had a problem with staffing. Data helped them figure out the best staffing strategy. These questions and problems become the foundation for all kinds of business tasks that you'll help solve as a data analyst. A business task is the question or problem data analysis answers for a business. This is where you'll focus a lot of your efforts in the work you'll do for future employers. Let's stick with our zoo example and see if we can imagine what a business task for a zoo might look like. We know the problem. Unpredictable weather was making it hard for the zoo to anticipate staffing needs. So maybe the business task could be something like analyze weather data from the last decade to identify predictable patterns. The data analyst could then plan out the best way to gather, analyze, and present the data needed to solve this task and meet the zoo's goals. Then, using data, the zoo would be able to make informed decisions about their daily staffing. So we talked a little about data-driven decision-making in previous videos. But just in case you need a refresher, here it is. Data-driven decision-making is when facts that have been discovered through data analysis are used to guide business strategy. The simplest way to think about decision-making is that it's a choice between consequences, good, bad, or a combination of both. In our zoo example, the zoo had the data they needed to make an informed decision that solved their problem. But what if they had made this decision without data? Let's say they just relied on observation and memory to track the weather and make staffing schedules. Well, we already know that wouldn't have solved their problem long term. Data analytics gave them the information they needed to find the best possible solution to their problem. That's the power of data. Observation and intuition are powerful tools in decision making, but they can only take us so far. When we make decisions based on just observation and gut feelings, we're only seeing part of the picture. Data helps us see the whole thing. With data, we have a complete picture of the problem and its causes, which lets us find new and surprising solutions we never would have been able to see before. Data analytics helps businesses make better decisions, and it all starts with a business task and the question it's trying to answer. With the skills you'll learn throughout this program, you'll be able to ask the right questions, plan out the best way to gather and analyze data, and then present it visually to arm your team so they can make an informed, data-driven decision. And that makes you critical to the success of any business you work for. Data is a powerful tool, and with great power comes, well, you know the rest. And you're doing a super job taking in all of this information. Up next, we'll talk about your responsibility as a data analyst to make sure you're gathering, analyzing, and presenting data in a way that's fair to the people being represented by that data. So far, we've covered the different roles data analysts play in business environments and the kinds of tasks that come with those roles. But data analysts have another important responsibility, making sure their analyses are fair. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Data is based on collected facts. How can it be unfair? Well, that's a good question. So let's learn what fairness means when we talk about data analysis and why it's important for you as an analyst to keep in mind. Fairness means ensuring that your analysis doesn't create or reinforce bias. In other words, as a data analyst, you want to help create systems that are fair and inclusive to everyone. Sounds simple enough? Well, here's the tough part about fairness in data analytics. There isn't one standard definition of it, but hopefully the way we've just described it can give you one way to think about fairness for right now. But it's about to get a bit trickier. Sometimes conclusions based on data can be true and unfair. What can you do then? Well, let's find out with an example. Let's say we have a company that's notorious for being kind of a boys club. It's very male dominated 
and there aren't many women employees. This company wants to see which employees are doing well, so they start gathering data on employee performance and their own company culture. The data shows that women just aren't succeeding as often as men in their company. Their conclusion? That they should hire fewer women. After all, women are doing poorly here, right? But that's not a fair conclusion for a couple of reasons. First, it doesn't even consider all of the available data on company culture, so it paints an incomplete picture. Second, it doesn't think about the other surrounding factors that impact the data, or in other words, the conclusion doesn't consider the difficulties women have trying to navigate a toxic work environment. If the company only looks at this conclusion, they won't acknowledge and address how harmful their culture is. And they won't understand why women are set up to fail within it. That's why it's important to keep fairness in mind when analyzing data. The conclusion that women aren't succeeding in this company is true, but it ignores the other systemic factors that are contributing to this problem. But don't worry, there's a way to make a fair conclusion here. An ethical data analyst could look at the data gathered and conclude that the company culture is preventing women from succeeding, and the company needs to address these problems to boost performance. See how this conclusion paints a much more complete and fair picture? It recognizes the fact that women aren't doing as well in this company and factors in why that could be, instead of discriminating against women applicants in the future. As a data analyst, it's your responsibility to make sure your analysis is fair and factors in the complicated social context that could create bias in your conclusions. It's important to think about fairness from the moment you start collecting data for a business task to the time you present your conclusions to your stakeholders. We'll learn more about bias in the data analysis process later on in another course. For now, let's check out an example of a data analysis that does a good job of considering fairness in its conclusion. A team of Harvard data scientists were developing a mobile platform to track patients at risk of cardiovascular disease in an area of the United States called the Stroke Belt. It's important to call out that there were a variety of reasons people living in this area might be more at risk. With that in mind, these data scientists recognized that fairness needed to be a priority for this project, so they built fairness into their models. The team took several fairness measures to make sure they were being as fair as possible when examining sensitive and potentially biased data. First, they teamed analysts with social scientists who could provide insights on human bias and the social context that created them. They also collected self-reported data in a separate system to avoid the potential for racial bias, which might skew the results of their study and unfairly represent patients. And to make sure their sample population was representative, they oversampled non-dominant groups to ensure their model was including them. It's clear that the team made fairness a top priority every step of the way. This helped them collect data and create conclusions that didn't negatively impact the communities they were studying. Hopefully these examples have given you a better idea of what fairness means in data analysis. But we're going to keep building on your understanding of fairness throughout this program. And you'll get to practice with some activities. By now, we know that there are all kinds of jobs in different industries available for data analysts. But now, it's time to think about something just as important. How can you tell if a job is a good fit for you and your career goals? Tough one, right? Don't worry, that's exactly what we'll cover in this video. There's a lot of important factors to think about when searching for your dream job. Let's talk about some of the most common factors first. Industry, tools, location, travel, and culture. Data is already being used by countless industries in all kinds of different ways. Tech, marketing, finance, healthcare, the list goes on. But one thing that's important to keep in mind, every industry has specific data needs that have to be addressed differently by their data analysts. The same revenue data can be used in three different ways by data analysts in three different industries, financial services, telecom, and tech. For example, a finance analyst at a bank 
pulls public revenue data of telecom company X to create a forecast that predicts where revenues will be in the future to recommend a stock price. The business analyst at telecom company X uses that same data to advise the sales team. Then a data analyst at the company who created a customer management tool for telecom company X will use that revenue data to determine how efficiently their software is performing. Finance, telecom, and tech all use data differently, so they need analysts who have different skills. It all comes down to what the needs of the industry are. Those needs will determine what kind of task you'll be given, the questions you'll be answering, and even how you'll approach job searching. If you're just starting out, a great way to guide your search is to think first about what you're interested in. Does helping people get healthier sound meaningful to you? Maybe you want to focus on using data to improve hospital admissions. What about helping people save for a happy retirement? You might want a job that uses data to determine risk factors in financial investments. Or maybe you're interested in helping journalism grow in your city. A job using data to help find your local news website, find more subscribers, could be the perfect role for you. The key is to think about your interest early in your job search. That'll lead you in the right direction, and it'll help you in interviews too. Potential employers will want to know why you're interested in their company and how you can address their needs. So if you can speak about your motivation to work in data analytics during interviews, you'll make yourself stand out in a great way. You'll have options when it comes to where you work and who you work for. But remember, you want to enjoy what you do. So it's a good idea to think about how you want to use your skills. Then search for jobs that allow you to do that. Next on the list of things to think about, location and travel. When you start your job search, you need to make some decisions about where you want to live. So it helps to ask yourself some questions. Does your preferred industry have opportunities in your area? Are you trying to stay local or would you be happy relocating? How long are you willing to commute to work every day? Will you drive to work, walk, take public transport? Is that possible year round? How do you feel about working remotely? Does working from home excite you or bore you? And of course, you'll want to consider cost of living and whether or not you want the convenience of city living or a quiet suburban home. And it's not just about where you'll be based. Some jobs may ask you to travel, which could be an exciting chance to see the world or a deal breaker. It's all about what you want out of this job. So start asking yourself some of these questions. Figuring out the answers can help you narrow down your search even further so you're only looking at jobs you'd actually accept. Once you've answered enough questions, you'll be able to identify some specific companies that fit your needs. At this point, it's a good time to think about your values and what kind of company culture is a good fit for you. Ready? Here come some more questions. Do you work best in a team or by yourself? Do you like to have a set routine or do you enjoy taking a new project and trying new things? Do your values match the company's values? You'll want to pay attention to these things during your job search and interview process so you can be sure you fully invested in the company you work for. That's the best way to start building an exciting and fulfilling career. This program will help you learn the core skills for data analytics in any setting. It's up to you where you want to take them. Whether that means starting in a completely new industry or moving into an analyst position in an industry you already have experience in. And hopefully what we've covered here has helped you get on track for your future job search. After this, you'll have a few activities to do and then you'll be able to move on to the next part of this course. We learned a lot so far like what kinds of opportunities are out there for data analysts in different industries, how data analysts help businesses make better decisions, the importance of fairness in data analytics, and the potential questions you can start asking yourself before your future job search. And you can always look back at these lessons if you want to review. 
Congratulations on finishing this video from the Google Data Analytics Certificate. Access the full experience, including job search help, and start to earn the official certificate by clicking the icon or the link in the description. Watch the next video in the course by clicking here. And subscribe to our channel for more from upcoming Google Career Certificates.